So I want to start off this video by saying, no, I don't know when the Nintendo Switch 2 is going to be revealed. But what I do know is Nintendo themselves has already provided a counter argument to one of the number one reasons so many gamers and fans think Nintendo absolutely unequivocally would not reveal Nintendo Switch 2 this year. Now, what are we talking about? Well, Furukawa actually gave us a very concise, very important insight into Nintendo's mindset around the Nintendo Switch successor. This does obviously involve some interpretation and speculation on my part, but also exact wording from Furukawa himself that I think a lot of people overlooked earlier this year. Because yes, we all know, okay, they're going to have some sort of announcement related to the Nintendo Switch successor by the end of this fiscal year that gives us all the way till the end of March of 2025. That's obviously gotten a lot of attention, but something else he said hasn't gotten the same attention and I think is equally as important as that announcement. So before we dive into what Furukawa said and why I think this actually counters one of the number one reasons people think it can't be announced this year, I want to remind you, hey, if you're enjoying all the conversations, news, and everything around the Nintendo Switch successor, Nintendo Switch 2, Echoes of Wisdom, and so much more, be sure to subscribe to the channel because we have so much more coming your way throughout the rest of this year and into the future. What does Buzz Lightyear say? To infinity and beyond. Okay, anyways, let's go ahead and dive right into this uh, because this comes from a Q&A session with Shintaro Furukawa. Now, he did this all the way back in May. That's how long it's been, but there's a question all of us content creators seem to overlook because it didn't seem on the surface to be related to Nintendo Switch 2, but uh, Furukawa decided, no, 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 no. This actually is all about Nintendo Switch 2. So it's question seven of the Q&A back during the May investors meeting. And it says, Nintendo was announced it expected operating profit for the current fiscal year to be 400 billion yen. The fact that you could forecast this much profit during what is largely a hardware transition period can suggest that base profit level of the company has risen. Before the release of Nintendo Switch, I recall a time when the market was anticipating an operating profit of over 100 billion yen as a Nintendo-like profit. I'm sure it has changed in seven years since the release of Nintendo Switch, but I'd like to hear your thoughts on what constitutes a Nintendo-like profit. Now, I want to be clear. We actually did talk about this back when it happened, and we went over like how Nintendo's you know floor has risen up and everything. But the most interesting part of the answer to this question actually takes place down here towards the final paragraph, because right in here we get uh, some interesting words from Nintendo. Because remember... Back when they projected 13 and a half million uh, for the Nintendo Switch uh, this fiscal year, they did say that while that is a goal of theirs, they understand that it's going to be hard to hit and Furukawa doesn't actually expect to sell 13 and a half million, but they wanted to make an ambitious goal anyways. And this could explain partially why maybe he doesn't think that goal is going to happen. So as we see here, it says, at the same time, this fiscal year is when we devote ourselves to preparations for the successor to Nintendo Switch. Straight from Furukawa's mouth, that's what this year's about for Nintendo internally. Everything internally is about setting up the Nintendo Switch successor, well, for success. Now, it says, and we believe that our top priority is to both maintain the momentum of Switch, obviously they don't want to let just Switch die, hence all the games coming out, and prepare for its successor. Rather than being overly focused on single-year profits, because remember, this you know, we're talking about single-year profits in that question, we have positioned this as a year to prepare for the future and to implement initiatives for continued growth and long-term rise in corporate value. Now, my interpretation of this, and you can interpret it differently, is essentially this. They don't want to focus on single-year profits, so they have this profit goal, profit projection they think they might hit, they hope they sell 13 and a half million switches, but they're not giving a hoot so much about this year's money. Like, well, investors obviously care about every single year. Nintendo's kind of like, hey, 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 we don't care about this year. Our number one priority is that our future is secured. Our future, to add like to our future corporate value, we need to ensure what we're doing next is going to succeed. This is a transition year for Nintendo. Their own admittance to that right here from Furukawa. And because of that, they want to make sure what they're doing next will be successful. 
So, what is the number one argument against the Nintendo Switch 2 being revealed this year? Well, Nintendo doesn't want to hurt their holiday sales. Now, we talked about counter arguments for this in the past on podcasts and in videos about how well you know you can do a lot of bundles and price cuts and all that to maintain momentum in sales plus they obviously have some big games coming jamboree will probably sell over 10 million units so there is some stuff out there to keep the momentum going but you know if you announce a new system that can hurt system sales also it can hurt system sales without a price cut and the switch to date hasn't had an official price cut but i got a video on that later because we might already have a preview of a price cut and what that price cut will be that being said what is nintendo telling you here well let's go back to furikawa's words it says at the same time this fiscal year is when we devote ourselves to preparations for the successor to nintendo switch now Rather than being overly focused on a single year profits, we have positioned this as a year to prepare for the future and to implement initiatives for continued growth and long-term rise in corporate value. What's Nintendo saying here, at least based on what I'm reading? Hey, we don't care if we do something today that hurts profits right now. If the thing we do today hurts today's profits but helps tomorrow's gains, we are going to do it. So... If Nintendo, and again, this is on Nintendo, if they think revealing the Nintendo Switch in 2024 helps, or the Nintendo Switch 2, the successor, helps set them up for success for that platform in 2025, even if it hurts their holiday sales, they do not care because they aren't focused on this single year. They're thinking about the future. Everything's about setting up the next system for success. Now, obviously, what can that all mean? We don't know when Nintendo Switch 2 is coming. Yeah, there's rumors and stuff and all there. A March date's been floated around. And look, if Nintendo is launching the system in March, it would venture to guess that waiting until January to reveal something that's releasing in March, that might not be the best strategy to set that system up for success. It may be a better strategy to reveal it in 2024 before you get to 2025. So, and Nintendo, by the way, has technically already announced the successor. Could we just get this out of the way? Uh, the, the, the biggest counter argument to worrying about it affecting holiday sales is Furukawa publicly stated the successor's coming like it's already out there so the big thing is all about what is the marketing campaign for this system and how far will they go with it and at this point if the plan is march even if the plan is june next year if nintendo thinks it's advantageous for the marketing campaign for switch 2 to announce it in 2024 even if it hurts holiday sales they don't care I think that's like the biggest takeaway from this questionnaire here is Furukawa saying, hey, all this focus on single year profits, we are actually thinking long term. We're thinking about this being that transition year. We're thinking about setting up the Switch successor for success. Yeah, they want to maintain Switch momentum. They don't, they don't want Switch to die, but that's what all the games are for, right? All the games they have coming, the price drops, etc. So... I don't know if I'm right, of course. Uh, I could be wrong on this interpretation. And other people have tried to tell me, well, you know, I don't think that's what he's saying and blah, blah, blah. Well, look, it says, hey, instead of focus on single year, we're focused on long term. Well, what do the switch sales matter this holiday outside of this fiscal year? Can, can we can we just have an honest conversation there? Why do we care about the, the, the switch sales this holiday? Well, as consumers, we, we shouldn't care. Nintendo is a multi-billion dollar company. They're doing just fine. But for people that want to keep momentum going, what does the holiday sales really matter in the end if the Switch successor is coming early in 2025? In the end, it doesn't really mean a whole lot, a whole heck of a lot, to be honest. Uh, and they're going to keep selling Switches, by the way, for years after Switch 2 comes out. It's not like Switch 2 comes out and suddenly switches off the shelves. No, they're going to keep selling it for years. They already have two major games announced for 2025 for Switch in Pokemon Legends ZA and Metroid Prime 4 Beyond. So we're just throwing out there that, hey, while Nintendo uh, obviously wants to keep momentum going, and yes, by the way, Nintendo may not reveal the system this year. They could reveal it next year and drop it next holiday and all that stuff. That might be their plan. But if their plan is early next year, Nintendo has already come out. Furukawa told us back in May, hey, if we do something that hurts us today in this current fiscal year, we don't care. 
if all it does is help us be successful for the next decade. And that's that, that's actually very smart thinking from Nintendo and does sit with their corporate strategy, right? They don't they like to be a zero debt company. They don't like to borrow money. They don't like to get in the red. They like to keep a big fat bank account. Like, yeah, that's the way Nintendo operates. They're a risk adverse company. It's not risky to reveal the Switch 2 this year if it's coming out early next year. There's no real risk there. The only thing they do is, oh, maybe we hurt a little bit of sales today but we're already massively profitable. So like if you heard a little sales today to have a massive second, you know, next fiscal year, first full, full fiscal year for Switch 2, I mean, I think Nintendo's all right with that. Anyways, we'll see what happens, folks. Uh, it could also be obviously just a lightning in a bottle warning that when we launch Switch 2, that first fiscal year of Switch 2 may not be like crazy profitable because it's the first year of a new platform but then again that's probably why they have legend za and metroid you know prime 4 beyond and stuff coming out to, to, to sell millions tens of millions of copies on the nintendo switch to keep the sales high plus they got movies coming of course none of the movies are next year that could have offset some revenue loss when transitioning because the big thing to remember about transitioning into a new system is you're kind of resetting the market right you launch the the new system the old system you know starts to fade a little bit and the new system has a small install base so when you release a 3d mario it might go ahead and sell 20 million plus copies but that's over like the next five years that won't be year one like tears of the kingdom last year sold 20 million last year alone like that's not gonna happen with like the 3d mario it's not gonna hit those kind of numbers for several years. Anyways, thank you guys so much for tuning in. I am Nathaniel Hubble Jets from Nintendo Prime. Let me know if I'm onto something or am I wearing this Pikachu shirt and this Zelda hat and just going crazy over here? Maybe I am. Uh, we got some more Switch 2 stuff for you later this week. And I believe it echoes a wisdom video that I've started some preliminary work on. See you tonight for our live stream. We got our podcast tomorrow as well. And we're starting our Link's Awakening live stream on Thursday night. We'll do a Q&A during that live stream. But we're going to be playing Link's Awakening because uh, you guys demanded it. And so I'm going to deliver. Perfect game to play before Echoes of Wisdom. Thank you for tuning in. And I'll catch you in the next video. Mm -hmm.